Hey guys, this is Carlos again. Um, my Facebook page is Scarlet and Sable, and uh, I did a tutorial recently about rust texture on models. Um, I got some really great feedback from all, uh, several people, and this is more of a tutorial about oil paint rendering. Oil paint rendering is something that Michael Rinaldi has been developing. I bought many of his tank art books. I highly recommend that uh, those of you out there in YouTube land go out and buy uh, these books as well. So to start off, the things that we're going to require for this particular tutorial are oil paint, oil paint, um, I'm sorry, thinner, and cardboard, something for you to wash out um, your brush so first we'll take a look at what we have here this is my cardboard palette the function of this thing this piece of cardboard is to absorb the linseed oil from or whatever carrier oil is in the paint uh, from the paint so you apply the paint directly to the cardboard and you can see that there's oil leaching out when the oil comes out what this is going to do is it's going to speed up the drying time and it's going to reduce the sheen of the paint so oil paint dries perhaps a little bit glossy, especially if it's got a lot of linseed oil. Uh, I'm using Mineral Spirits. This is actually uh, Windsor Newton Sands Odor. I, um, I bought this on clearance. Uh, there you go. Um, you can buy, uh, I've used Clean Strip from Home Depot, which is odorless mineral spirits. Uh, if you're watching in another country, you might have to uh, consult with uh, your local experts there because what some people call white spirit in England, and it is white spirit, uh, we like when somebody says they use white spirit to thin something and then I've gone back and tried it, it congealed immediately. And that was when we were talking about an alcohol paint. So uh, not all products contain the same or are the same composition across different countries. What you want is petroleum distillate and you want it to be obviously low odor because otherwise you're going to need to be doing it in a well ventilated area. Uh, so this contains petroleum distillate. So really any kind of um, enamel or oil thinner, uh, high quality from an artist's uh, store is better. I've tried Clean Strip from Home Depot in the USA and it seems to be a high quality product. I think in the US we have um, pretty strict standards as far as like the quality of the products that are available for at least what's at Home Depot because I've put it on many models. I've never had a model get brittle on me. I've never seen it eat away the paint. Now on the other hand, I have used Turpinoid and something I didn't know about Turpinoid is it is very aggressive when it comes to acrylic paint. So if you're using Turpinoid or uh, distil distilled turpentine, it is slightly more aggressive than mineral spirits. So again, I've never had mineral spirits attack my model undercoat. I have seen that with turpenoid and uh, distilled turpentine. So if you are only able to get distilled turpentine or turpenoid, just be careful uh, and practice on a scrap piece. So uh, I hope you can see that I've already done a little bit of the oil weathering technique. And I don't do it, uh, I do it more the Michael Rinaldi way. I don't do it like what many people do, which is like either a sludge wash, a point dot filter, because what uh, we're doing with this oil is we're kind of, we're creating shade and we're also creating variation. So. You're going to get a tiny, tiny little bit of oil. Not much at all. This stuff goes a very, very long way. So you just put a little bit in the corner right there. That's good. Maybe a little bit over here. And up here. And then over here underneath. Um, and this is probably going to be against his body, but we're just doing it because we took it off. And uh, for completion's sake, we don't necessarily need to hit every single nook and cranny, and this is partially for demonstrative purposes. But what I'm doing is I'm going to apply this in almost like a like a non-metallic metal type shade, which what I'm doing is is your highlight is down here, for example, on this part of the fist, so the shade is up here in the corner, or that's how I've chosen to airbrush it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this oil that's in the shadow and I'm going to diffuse it across 
the gauntlet, try to leave the highlight intact, but use this to shade. And that's why this is one of the great strengths of oil paints. It allows you um, to do these kind of like super, super sick blends without any real effort. It does take practice. It does take technique. I'm not saying you're going to go out and get oil paint and become a genius, but it's far less effort than like sitting here and doing 10,000 glazes with acrylic. So now what I'll do is I'll take my blending brush and I want it to be slightly damp. I don't want it to be soaked with thinner. So when I say it needs to be slightly damp, we can use the cardboard to kind of determine just how much thinner is on there. See how much is flowing out? I don't want that much. I just want it to be a little bit damp. So I'm going to keep drawing out thinner until I'm there. All right, looks like we're about there. And see the, the tip of the brush is starting to fray. I noticed this yesterday. I did, this is the second take of this video. Kalinsky, I don't know if, uh, it, you, they say you can use it for oil painting. I mean, this is a Winsor & Newton brush, but it doesn't really, doesn't really seem to, you know, hold the it doesn't seem to hold the mineral spirits very well so anyways i'm going to take my damp brush and i'm going to start to uh, diffuse this oil i'm going to start to kind of just gently tap it into the surface and i'm going to see kind of where i'm at so this is actually a lot of oil and this is i guess it's good that it happened it's bad that it happened on this model because <laughs> I have plans for it, but it's good that it happened uh, while I'm doing this because this is definitely one of the pitfalls. Uh, I'm trying to get it in focus. Okay, so <clears throat> you can see that's super dark. The brilliant part about oils is that you have quite a bit of working time. That's why, to you know, when you're when you're looking for some kind of like really filthy, dirty effect and blend, this is going to really these oils are. I mean, they're tremendous for it. They can go opaque, they can go super saturated, but one of their great strengths is their uh, flexibility. The elbow, it was already kind of dark, and I'm not, I'm not going to draw the shade up into this area. This is where this is kind of a highlight area, so I'm not necessarily wanting to do that. It kind of has um, leach there already. But we're not gonna we're not gonna obsess too much about that. So right here on this uh, readout display, I've applied oil over here uh, on this edge. And what I'll do is I'll do the same thing. I'm just gonna you know, kind of work it into the surface, and then bring it over. And you can if if you things go horribly wrong and things get really out of hand, you can always. Uh, get a heavy application of thinner on your brush and then you can clear away almost all of what you've done that is also another advantage of oil okay so the gauntlet this is what we talked about highlight right here I'm trying to it doesn't really can't see it with that perspective the highlight is on this kind of uh, left side of the gauntlet as you're looking at it in the camera the shade has been applied over here on the right side in this corner. I'm just going to draw it down. And that diffused nicely. That was uh, properly weighted, I believe, as they would say uh, in merry old England. Um, mm, focus isn't really working out for us today. There we go. Okay. So now on the shoulder. Again, we have a big splotch of oil. We need to correct that. So we're going to draw it back down towards the shade. And we're going to continue to diffuse it. Continue to work it. Fortunately, this, this is kind of this is the angle that the arm is going to be at. So if there's a little more depth of shade in, down here in this recess in this corner, that's not necessarily a bad thing. Uh, when I first saw it, though, it seemed pretty aggressive. So I wanted to kind of tamp that down if I could and also back here part of part of doing this part of doing this oil shading just like with rust just like with any technique is that you're not necessarily doing exactly as things appear if you painted everything exactly as it appeared you wouldn't really get the contrast that you need to achieve for miniature painting miniature painting you're taking very small objects and you're trying to make them appear um, you know to have dimension and volume 
so that everything that we do is trying to draw out these traits. A very well-painted miniature is going to do all those things, but you're not going to be able to tell. You're just going to be like, wow, that looks like the real thing. We, our brains do know kind of like what's what looks good and what doesn't, what looks uh, real and what looks fake. So anyhow, that's just a short uh, kind of explanation. You can see, I'm going to try to adjust the light here. We've gotten some decent tone on the bottom of that uh, shoulder piece and across the gauntlet itself we definitely have a lot of the, the oil color right here so anyhow uh, thanks for watching guys please comment let me know you know if I'm if I'm going if I'm getting real windy and I'm not on topic which is kind of what people said then that's not really what I want I want to, I want to give the people what they want I want us to have you know I want this to be useful all right guys thanks for watching